And another way to explain this is just to say again, molecular orbitals are a linear combination of atomic orbitals. So let's start our discussion of a bonding orbital. Our simplest case that we can look at would be if we had two 1s orbitals coming together. So let's say, for example, in a hydrogen atom. So in hydrogen atom A, I'll depict that here, where the nucleus is this dot, and then the circle is what I'm depicting as the wave function. It makes sense to draw the wave function as a circle because we do know that 1s orbitals are spherically symmetric. So we can say that a circle is a good approximation for a 1s wave function. Similarly, with the second hydrogen atom, we've got the nucleus in the middle and the 1sb wave function around it. So these are atomic orbitals. What we're going to do in forming a molecule is just bring these two orbitals close together such that now we have their nucleus, the two nuclei, at a distance apart that's equal to the bond length. And what we end up forming is a molecular orbital because as we bring these two atomic orbitals close together, the part between them, that wave function, constructively interferes such that in our molecular orbital, we actually have a lot of wave function in between the two nuclei. So we can go ahead and name our molecular orbital just like we know how to name our uh, atomic orbitals. And I'm going to name this sigma 1s. The 1s just comes from the fact that the molecular orbital is a combination of two 1s atomic orbitals. And the sigma tells us something about the symmetry of this molecular orbital, specifically that it's cylindrically symmetric about the bond axis. So this is the bond axis. It's just the axis between the two nuclei. Sometimes it's also called the internuclear axis. So anytime you have two atoms bonding, the bond axis is just the axis that, that they're bonding along. Another thing I want to point out about every sigma orbital that you see, and it will make more sense when we contrast it with pi orbitals later, but in sigma orbitals, you have no nodal planes along the bond axis. So we would, if we had a nodal plane here, we'd see an area where the wave function was equal to zero. We don't see that. It will make more sense when we can show you one where it does have that area. But keep in mind, uh, sigma orbitals have no nodal planes along the bond axis. <clears throat> 